Hi guys, Michelle here. In this video I want to run through with you the gear that I took with me on my recent hike of the Furunaki track over in the Furunaki Conservation Park. Now I do want to apologise first up for the quality of this video. Unfortunately my computer once again has crapped out on me and so I'm not able to use it for video editing so I'm currently recording on my iPad and I'm hoping that I can edit that video on the iPad somehow later. Um, but yeah that's probably going to mean that the quality is a little bit less than what you are used to. Hopefully that doesn't detract from anything. So let's get straight into the gear. So you guys are already pretty familiar with my big three or big four items already. Um, you know that I am using the Z-Pax Arc Hall 62 litre pack and um, because uh, you can never plan for weather contingencies I have also got one of these Cedar Summit um, pack liners. I think this one is a 50 litre pack liner. Um, I've actually been really happy with it, although it is a little bit tricky to get it sitting right in my pack, but basically there's some black Velcro that I just attach together this side, and then um, once I'm ready to roll it all down, I attach these two yellow bits of Velcro together, and then I can just roll it down. My sleeping bag, again, you are very familiar with. I have the Enlightened Equipment uh, Enigma, which is the 10 degree version, the 10 degree version of the Enigma. And this is it here, this is what I managed to get it to pack down to. Now the Enigma comes with its own stuff sack, but it does not compress down very small in the um, nylon stuff sack that it comes with. So I actually picked up one of these compression sacks from MacPack here in New Zealand. Um, very, very inexpensive, but I was super impressed with just how nice and small it got my sleeping bag down to. So because mum had a smaller pack than I did, and hers is only a 28 litre pack, yes, that's right, she managed to do an overnight hike with only a 28 litre pack, um, I actually ended up carrying her sleeping bag and my sleeping bag. So her sleeping bag was probably at least double the size of this and I ended up squishing that right down into the bottom of my pack and then sitting this up next to it. So these compression sacks were a complete lifesaver. Now you'll know that my plan is to end up with one of the Thermarest x Light sleeping pads. Um, I still haven't invested in one yet um, but the great thing about going out hiking uh, on overnight trips to huts in New Zealand is that most of the huts have mattresses in them. So they are usually about yay thick um, and they're just, you know, as long as a normal bed basically and about as wide as a sleeping pad basically is. Um, so I ended up taking my uh, bed roll with me as well. This is just a closed cell phone roll with some Reflectix material on the other side to give it a little bit more um, thermal properties. Um, and I wasn't going to use this, so I was just going to sleep straight on top of the mattress, but I got quite cold in the hut because we weren't able to get a fire going and so I actually ended up unrolling this and sleeping on top of the bed roll on top of the mattress but I don't think I could sleep on this just by itself so definitely upgrading to the um, x Light sleeping pad will be on the list of things that I need to do very shortly and in addition to that I also made a bit of an investment and mum and I both decided that we were going to try out an inflatable pillow so this one here is the Trecology inflatable pillow, um, which I had heard some really great things about. I did look at the Cedar Summit Eros, um, but it was slightly, I think it was slightly heavier than this one and also like a lot more expensive. And considering we weren't sure whether we were going to actually enjoy using a pillow like this or not, I thought, well, we'll just try the cheaper version. So this was something like 15 US dollars off of Amazon. I managed to get it landed here in New Zealand for about $35, which is a good $30 shy of what it would cost me to buy it out of the shop here. And it's actually really cool. It just takes a few breaths to inflate. If you've got the valve set right, it's actually just got a pressure release valve in the top there. So I can just let out as much air as I need, sort of make it comfortable to sleep on. I found it really, really comfy to sleep on. Um, I think I didn't have the valve set right when I first set it up and so it did deflate um, for the first couple of hours of the night. I woke up and it was basically flat so I had to re-inflate it again. But 
yeah that was just my error that was nothing to do with the pillow itself so I'm really really happy with this it's nice and big as you can see you can use it like an actual proper pillow so yeah definitely gonna keep trying that out and using it in the future okay let's move on to my cooking system you guys are all pretty familiar with my cooking setup basically everything I've got pops into this lovely little bag here and this is one of the Tox Titanium 900 milliliter cook pots. I'm still really really happy with this although I was pretty gutted because I managed to burn some porridge on the bottom of this um, and it's made a horrible ugly black mark so um, basically everything that I pack down, everything that I need for cooking I pack down into this pot so got one of these 110 gram gas canisters uh, I think this one's actually 100 gram but I was using an MSR version and I got through all of the gas overnight now there's a couple of reasons why that might have happened um, firstly I think when I'm using my MSR pocket rocket which is the stove that I use in order to cook um, I think that I potentially don't have it turned up high enough to start with and so um, my water is typically taking me probably anywhere between three and five minutes to actually get to a bubbling stage or, or like a simmering stage and then it takes even longer to get to a full rolling boil so I am trying to be a little bit uh, more aggressive about this and have it up higher to start with but also on top of that I did have to boil something like three or four full pots of water um, because we only had a certain number of stoves between the five people so that did probably three pots of water at night time for dinner and then two full pots of water in the morning but anyway so in my pot i just pack my gas canister then obviously i've got my lighter which is just one of the big lighters i don't know if this is a mini one or a maxi one but anyway it fits in there so i don't care um i use my buff as a bit of a towel slash cleaning um, cloth although I'm not going to keep doing that because I would really like to use it as a buff and not just something to clean my pot out with so um, that will stay stored in here for now but then it's going to make its way probably into one of my side pockets for some other trips that I end up going on um, and then my collapsible cup again can't be any happier with this collapsible cup it's it's not a cup it's actually the mug size um, so that does two cups of water it's really handy for measuring things it's good for having a nice big cup of tea in the morning because that's just the sort of person I am I get cranky if I don't have my cup of tea so um, I love it and it just packs down to nice and thin and it fits perfectly into my 900 milliliter pot um, and then the lid obviously on top of that, that's my stove which I just carry separately. I'd love it to fit actually in my pot but unfortunately it doesn't. Um, then I've also got my titanium spoon, so again this is another um, little contraption by Tox and it's just a nice long handled titanium spoon. Really happy with my titanium spoon. Um, matches just in case. So. Uh, this was in case my lighter ran out, but also for lighting the fire and all that sort of stuff So I did carry an actual box of matches. In fact, I think we had two boxes of matches just in case one of them got wet And then something you're all gonna laugh at me about But I took this. This is a two litre bottle for carrying water and I had this absolutely brimful Now this was a complete personal choice it was not necessary at all there was plenty of water along the track and there was also water at the hut it's just rainwater it comes off of the roof and um, they did recommend that if you're going to drink the water at the hut you should still treat it regardless so I actually ended up filtering it using my soya squeeze and then boiling it I mean we were boiling it anyway so that was fine um, but I did decide to carry in two extra liters of water just in case we couldn't be bothered filtering the water um, so my soya squeeze, uh, the flow rate was pretty good but I screwed it onto a larger bottle and then was trying to filter it into my pot and obviously the more that you squeeze the bottle the more 
or the less air that you've got in the bottle. So like every now and again, I had to release the soy I squeeze to let some air in so that I could then carry on squeezing the bottle. So it was a little bit tricky. In hindsight, I should have actually carried with me the pouch that you get with the soy squeeze and then that way it would have made filtering just that little bit easier. But I wanted to take some nice um, filtered water from home too, just in case, and also just to drink as water to and from the trail so that I didn't have to worry about drinking yucky other water because the water at the hut did taste a little bit weird. Of course knowing what I know now about the conditions at the hut at this time of year, i.e. no dry firewood, I think I would much rather have just left this at home and carried in two dry fire logs. Um, at the gas stations here you can go and buy dry firewood kindling or you can buy actual logs, they're probably about this big and they don't weigh very much because they're dry and um, I think I would rather have packed out probably two of those if I could have fit it rather than this but never mind that's not something that you know at the time. Okay so let's talk about clothing. Um, so most of you are familiar with what I will wear to hike in um, and that is generally speaking a pair of leggings. Um, I've finally managed to get myself a pair of merino leggings. These are just 150 gram merinos and um, they're actually really quite good to hike in. And then I similarly have also just bought a nice lightweight 150 gram merino top too. So I generally wear that underneath. Um, at the moment it's just a cotton singlet. Um, and at some point in the future I'll upgrade that so that I don't have any cotton but that's not right next to my skin so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then if it's really cold, um, which it wasn't too bad on the Furunaki track but I did need another insulating layer that wasn't as um, heavy duty as the down jacket, I usually wear my icebreaker. So this is a heavier icebreaker, I think it's a 200 gram. Um, this is one of the body fit zone um, icebreakers, it's got the loops in the sleeves for your thumb which is always really nice and that just keeps me nice and warm while I'm hiking. Um, then obviously on my feet I am wearing some shoes. Uh, so I did take my keen Targi boots with me. They're absolutely filthy because we did the Waihaha track last weekend out to the Waihaha hut and that was a little bit muddy but they do need a bit of a good clean. Um, and there's some smart wool socks too. So I, I took with me two pairs of socks, one pair that I was hiking in and then one pair which is a nice thick pair which I actually borrowed from mum to sleep in and I didn't need any other socks so that was really good. I have recently invested in some new clothing and uh, you're gonna get a sneak peek at it now and I will do a proper video about some of this gear um, a little bit later on. But the first um, item of new clothing that I've got is this lovely rain jacket. Now this is from Matte Pack, it's one of the Matte Pack Traverse jackets. It is fully waterproof, it's got a 20,000 millimeter hydrostatic head and then it's also got 10,000 millimeter or whatever the breathability rating is on it. So it's as waterproof and as breathable as certainly any of the matte pack jackets will be. I just love it, I have absolutely loved it so far, I've used it so much. It's so nice after such a long time of not having a waterproof jacket at all to know that I'm not going to get wet when I'm going out now. So again, I'll do a proper gear review video on that a little bit later. And then I also invested in some proper waterproof pants. Now these are the Mac Pack Hightails, very, very lightweight and again, incredibly waterproof. So I am super happy with those too. I mentioned about a down jacket. So yes, I have finally gotten a down jacket. I think you have seen it on some of my videos previously because I've been wearing it when I've been outside creating videos. Um, but again, this is it here. Uh, again, it's another Mac Pack brand. Um, I love the Mac Pack stuff and I will fill you in a little bit more on that a little bit later too. But this is the Ice Fall jacket. Now this is 800 loft goose down um, and it weighs slightly less than the Ghost Whisperer. I'll give you the full specs and everything when I do a full review on this. But so far I have absolutely loved this jacket. I don't know what I did before I got it. Um, it's obviously a hooded version. Again, it's got that longer chin and it just keeps me so warm. It's just nice to know that I can keep warm and not have to worry about being cold when I'm out on the trail. 
Um, interestingly, when I was out on the Furunaki track, I didn't need to wear this while I was hiking. But last weekend, when we hiked out to Waihaha Hut, I got freezing cold. Like, I was so cold. And when I got to the hut, uh, and Mum said she wanted to sit outside to have lunch, I just sat there and I was getting colder and colder and colder, even though the temperatures weren't particularly bad. So I put this on, and then I actually ended up hiking all the way back to the car, wearing it, about nine kilometers or something like that. Um, and I didn't get too hot in it either, so it kept me nice and warm, and I'm just really happy that I had it. And while we're on the subject of warmth, you obviously need your basics. So I've got a pair of uh, gloves here, and then of course my trusty All Blacks beanie. Um, which is doing well at the moment because we are absolutely creaming it in terms of the rugby championship at the moment, so happy with that. <laughs> now as far as sleeping clothes and just general dry clothes and things for the hut goes, I really wanted to keep it very, very minimal. I didn't want to pack my fears and um, I knew I was going to be cold but I was confident enough that I had enough redundancies um, in case I got cold to not need to pack a ton of gear. So I actually ended up packing all of my clothes into one of these, which is just one of the wash bags that you can buy to put your clothes and your delicates and things in when you put them through the wash. Um, and in here I actually packed what I'm wearing today. So this is a uh, thermal top, this is a higher weight though, 220 gram thermal top. And then I've got these um, leggings on here too. Uh, these are from Kathmandu track pants from Kathmandu. I actually really love them. They're not merino or anything. I think they're mainly made up of synthetic material, but they are quite warm. Um, I've been wearing them around the house a lot, so I found them to be quite warm as well while I was on the trail. So I packed those down and that was pretty much all of the clothing that I took. I did take a couple of extra things packed into my clothing bag here. Um, the first and most important of those being my handkerchief. So I'm trying to be as zero waste as possible in my general everyday life. And I'm also trying to carry as much of that over as I can into my hiking. Um, and one of the things that I noticed I am using a lot, or was using a lot, was single-use tissues. I've done that all my life. I have a nose that just continually runs, regardless of what temperature it is outside. So I decided to make the switch to hankies, and I actually made these hankies out of a couple of old t-shirts that I had, uh, or actually that Dad had, chopped them all up, and now this is basically what I use every day. So I took one of these with me, and they're just so cool, because you can rinse them out at night time, they dry overnight, um, and then they're good to go the next day. So I'm just ecstatic about my new found love of handkerchiefs. Uh, a sports bra obviously and then I just took a flannel with me and some people might say oh well, why bother you know you're just going to be sweaty anyway. It was really nice to be able to wake up in the morning and heat some water up in my pot and to just be able to wash my face and under, under my arms mainly. Um, it was just refreshing it made me feel like I'd just gotten out of bed and had a shower basically so for the sake of carrying an extra couple of hundred grams here probably not even that plus a little bit of soap we just cut off some soap from a bar that we had at home it was totally worth it and I would definitely recommend that I tend to talk a lot in these, these videos and they tend to be very long I apologize but there's just stuff that I want to tell you so I hope you don't mind the length of the video we're going to move on to toiletries and things now. So I just carry all of my toiletries in a little pouch like this. This is actually one that I picked off off of picked up off of an Emirates flight not too long ago, and they're really really handy. Um, I didn't take the sunscreen, but it's always in there just in case for my other hikes and things. Um, it has a little eye mask, which again you might think is a bit silly to carry, and yes, it's probably a good 10 grams worth of weight. Um, but you know, you just never know when you might want to have a slightly better sleep. So um, I just keep it in there because it weighs nothing. Toothbrush obviously, I didn't cut this one in half yet. I might cut it in half in the future, I don't know yet. Some earplugs. Now I should have used these earplugs. Um, we did have one member of our party who snored and like that's fine. I'm not one of these people who gets grumpy about people snoring, they can't help it. Um, but I decided I didn't want to wear the earplugs for some silly reason, probably off the back of my anxiety. And as a result, I suffered and I didn't really sleep all night. So for the sake of carrying, again, five grams worth of weight, um, it's definitely worth it. I also carry some, a little tube of hand cream. 
just because my hands get so so incredibly dry especially in cold weather like that um, I've still got my travel spray um, which I don't use very often anymore but it's really great for just taking the edge off of any of those um, little anxious moments and panic attacks and things that I get and then if things get really bad I also do carry some medication with me as well just in case the other thing that I carry and I haven't really used this as much as I want to but this is um, an essential oil which is called stress less it's got um, bergamot petit grain petit grain mandarin sandalwood and patchouli in it and it actually smells really quite nice so I'm going to start using this a little bit more and see if that has a notable noticeable effect on my stress levels and my anxiety. Um, obviously we did take some toilet paper with us as well. Okay so we will just get to the miscellaneous items now. Um, I carry with me a small first aid kit. So I need to condense this down. This is by no means what I would take on a through hike with me. Uh, but we have various different kinds of hydration sachets. Um, I've also got some DEET wipes, I've got some alcohol wipes together with some antiseptic ointment. So this is a really tiny tube of Benadine. Um, an assortment of plasters, again not heaps but just enough so that if you've got any problems you can deal with them. Paracetamol and ibuprofen. Um, I do carry an extra panty liner um, and a couple of tampons even though I don't use these in my everyday life anymore. Um, and then also just some cold and flu hot drink just in case um, I got a sore throat or anybody started to get a bit flu-y then we had some of those as well. I did also um, carry a couple of bandages and things with me as well um, which I've taken out since but uh, funnily enough we did end up using one of the bandages to strap up Kieran's knee so it was a good job that we had them. And then I've got all of my miscellaneous items and another one of these Cedar Summit waterproof stuff sacks um, and this just allows me to keep most of my electronics and things dry so all tangled up in there is a set of headphones um, this here is a charging cable for my battery pack so this is a 5000 4000 milliamp hour battery pack uh, which is completely depleted because I ended up charging my phone off of it and then also mum charged her phone up off of it overnight as well so uh, that was good and I also carried this extra two and a half thousand milliamp one too. I'm going to be upgrading to one of the anchor um, probably a 20,000 milliamp charger if I can get one that's not too heavy and not too expensive and then that means I can just get rid of that weight and hopefully have something a little bit lighter. Um, carry with me this little tripod as well. Very rarely does this actually get used and again I'm going to be upgrading this at some point. Maybe to a Joby Gorillapod, maybe to something slightly different. This is quite heavy for what it is and also um, it's not particularly easy to set up and it, it only really gives you an option to set something up on a flat surface so I need something that's a little bit more versatile than that but for now it does the job and at least I've got a tripod if I need one. Charging cable obviously for my phone, um, my headlamp which again so happy with my headlamp this is one of the black diamond spots um, we used it all night and all of us had our headlamps on um, and I'm sure it's still got a lot of battery life left so I really love it and it gives out some great light too um, but just in case the battery did die I also took a full spare set of batteries with me as well and something else that falls into that miscellaneous category I suppose is my neck knife so I don't know if I've actually um, told you guys about this previously in much detail at all but this is one of the Gerber neck knives um, so the idea is that I can wear it around my neck and if I was going to be going on a longer hike I probably would do that just so that I've got it there with me but you can basically pull and release very quickly um, and I really like that idea from a personal safety perspective as well as anything else um, but the cool thing as well is that it does have this clip on the back so I can clip it to my trousers or you know a belt or something like that 
um, the knife itself is really cool. It's a Bear Grylls version. Um, the grip is really nice. It just fits my hand nicely. Um, and I'm able to cut cheese and do all sorts of stuff. It's got a really cool, let's show you there, thumb grip there. So I guess you could um, use it to do a little bit of bushcraft if you needed to make a fire from sticks and things like that. You could probably use it for that. Uh, it's not a particularly long blade, but to be honest, I'm really only going to be using it for cutting cheese and maybe salami and bits and pieces like that. Popping blisters, I did use it to pop a blister when we got to Vern's camp on the way back from our overnight. So, I love it. It doesn't get as much use as I would like it to, but it's a really neat little tool. And then the final item or items of miscellaneous gear that we took were some cards and things. So uh, when I was going through all of the stuff about clothing and what I wear when I'm hiking and things, I probably should have covered my trekking poles as well. Um, I'm still using the Cascade Mountain Tech Carbon Cork poles. Um, I, I don't tend to put a lot of pressure on them, so they are still standing up very well at the moment. I generally take them out with me just about every hike that I go on. Um, albeit I don't always use them on every hike. Um, I actually ended up surrendering one of them to Kieran who didn't have any trekking poles and he was really struggling with his knee so um, I think he found that they it really did help him with that knee problem too. I know that when I weighed my pack before we left, like when mum and I had packed everything up and we were waiting for the other guys to arrive, it was sitting at around about 12 kilos I think it was. Um, and I thought that that was pretty good. Um, that had water in it, that had uh, the food that mum and I were taking, um, albeit not my dinners because Amy was making a big batch of risotto and then we were going to pick up the risotto from her once they arrived and picked us up. So the only thing that my pack didn't have at that point was my portion of dinner which was risotto. And then when we got to the shuttle there was a big reshuffle of who needed to carry what, um, mainly because Amy, Karen, and Cheryl uh, didn't have enough room in some of their packs to carry everything. So I ended up taking on, I think it was three portions of risotto instead of just the one or two that I was going to carry. Um, and each of those packets probably weighed 500 grams each, so there would have been an extra kilogram and a half, maybe even two kilograms in risotto weight. Um, I also packed out about six Snickers bars <laughs> um, because nobody else had bought Snickers and they all decided that they wanted some. So there were some little bits and pieces and additions to my pack weight. And I think that once all was said and done, it was probably much closer to 15 kilos, maybe even slightly over 15 kilos. So I'm kind of glad that I did carry that much weight for the full 16 kilometer track out there. Uh, and then of course we ate all of our food and drank most of our water overnight so um, on the way back the next day I would have been carrying closer to 10 kilos I think so. Okay that is everything for this video. I'm going to go and get a big drink of water now because I am totally dry. Um, but I do just quickly want to tell you about some updates and things that I've made to the website and some new ways that you can get involved with me. So um, you'll know that I have a blog at longwhitegypsy.com. Uh, I do encourage you to go over there and have a look at it. Uh, you will also, uh, if you visit that site, you can sign up for a uh, reminder every time I post a new blog. So please make sure that you sign up for that. Also, I have just recently switched from uh, the Meetup platform for hosting the group hike series around here to a Facebook group or community. So uh, if you go and search Facebook for the Long White Gypsy hiking slash tramping community, you'll find the group. I do encourage you to join even if you're not in this region and even if you're not in this country because my um, hope for that group is that it will just become a place for people of lower skill levels to share some knowledge and also for people of higher skill levels if they want to join to to share that knowledge with people who are beginners 
um, and for there to be no judgment, no shaming and all that sort of stuff. Um, primarily though, it will be a place where people can organise hikes with other um, people who are of their same level or just in their area. The main problem that I was finding with the meetup platform is that it was so dependent on me being available to host the hikes that it was starting to become a bit redundant. So now there is an ability for anybody anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world to approach me if they would like to host a hike and then I can create an event through that group and we can get some people along. So please, please, please go and um, submit a drawing request for the group. If you haven't already, go and like the Facebook page, Long White Gypsy. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram, sign up for those blog posts, and I will see you next time.